Hello there, Chip Chip Cheerio. <laughs> it's the episode you've been waiting for. It's all about our London trip, and we're going to answer your questions. We're going to tell you about some fun we had. We're going to tell you about London Bridge. <laughs> How come every time I come around? Anyways, it's episode 87. Let's get to it. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Manny and Sean Experience Podcast. My name is Manny. And I'm Sean. And how are all of you beautiful people doing out there? Hopefully you're doing really well. Taking care of yourself, taking care of your needs. Doing some self-care. Reflection. Um, not letting this election cycle get the best of you and your mental health. Yep, that's called alcohol. <laughs> Drink alcohol. No, I'm just fine. Um, we do not condone. Well, I mean, drink responsibly, as they say. I have something to say. Oh. This is not <laughs> on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I was just like, what? <laughs> um, so last week's episode, for those of you who heard it, may have noticed that the audio was a little distorted. I did the best that I could to fix it. Um, we discovered that it was an issue with the recording program that we used technology stupid um but that episode should be at least clear enough for you to hear it and enjoy it unlike the raw version of it which is probably unlistenable listen i don't know what's going on on youtube but that episode has well, not. i'm surprised we haven't gotten no hate comments on it yet so if you didn't listen, it is all about the debate and you should go take a listen in it because we break it down and give you the highlights of what we thought were some of the best parts and some of the worst parts. Yeah. What's, uh, what's been, what's been exciting for you this week? For me? Yeah. Um, knowing that next week I'm on vacation. <laughs> yeah, that makes 100%. No, it's been a good week. Work has been work. Um, it, it's been, I'm, I'm in a period of waiting for other people. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's been good. How about you? It's been, it's been, yeah, it's been the longest week I've experienced in a while. But here we are, uh, recording the episode that comes out the day we will go to Miami to board a plane to Barcelona. Um, yep, 3.45 a.m. Thursday morning. We shall be boarding a plane. It's fine, it's fine. You go to sleep, it's fine. <laughs> it sounded real cute when we booked it. We're like, oh, we'll get there Thursday. We don't have to take an extra day off. And then now it's not sounding so cute anymore. I'm like, wait, we're boarding a train at 8 p.m. We're getting into Miami at what, midnight? Yeah. And then... <laughs> going to the airport. I had to go check in <laughs> to an airport. Anyways, I'm sure the adrenaline and excitement of traveling will power me through and then I can crash on the plane. <laughs> yes. It's my hope. But this episode isn't about Spain. This episode's about London. So let's get into the mix. Let's go. Let's go. You're in the mix. Some yeah, girl, I did my one two step. Wait, are we still recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> Anyways, we're in the mix, I guess. Now. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if Sean will cut that out. Um, did you see me dancing? I heard it. Okay, I did not see it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I felt Sierra's spirit with the one two step. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad it, the music bought you some joy. <laughs> I will be talking about music in my What's Your Issue. All right, well, Spoiler. Let's hurry okay. up and get through this <laughs> because we've already wasted time. It's fine. Anyways, Let's talk about London. So here we are. Um, just a funny story about this episode is we actually have already recorded this one and we were like, wasn't good enough. Uh, and it wasn't audio issues. It was just the format just did not work. But no. so here we are. Uh, we asked you about your questions or what questions you had about traveling to London. Uh, do you want to start with those or do you want to just talk about the adventure first? Or? Um, 
Can we mix and mingle? <laughs> sure, yeah. Let's mix and mingle. Let's let's start with their first question. Sure. So the first question is, you know, I bought the expensive foldable for the podcast. <laughs> And um, now Sean has a monitor in here, so I can just look at it. You didn't do it just for the podcast. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> um, did the flight suck? <laughs> was the first question. Um, we're going to actually talk a little bit about Norse, which is the airline we took. Yeah. So we can package all that into a two for one. I'm going to say, to so answer your question, just blindly and boldly no the flight did not suck um it was the longest i've been on a plane Mm -hmm. and i did think that i would be you know cramped and just tired and tired of sitting but it was actually a very comfortable and very nice flight minus some turbulence towards the end yeah Yeah, i i thought the flight was I i was preparing for the worst i love aviation i love flying I cannot be on a plane for longer than two hours. I get antsy. I get fidgety. I want to get up. My brain starts racing. But I don't know if I overly psyched myself up for this one, but I felt like it was nothing. Yeah. And we, I mean, we left at like 830 at night. Yeah. Um, It was delayed, but yeah. It was delayed, but. It was not like it wasn't too late. It wasn't too early. Yeah, we were out by like ten, I think. And you know, you got on the plane. You got comfy. It was a full flight. Mm, yes, we'll get to that story in a minute. Um, <laughs> but overall, like the seats were very comfortable. I had enough leg room. That was one of my concerns and one of your concerns. Um, and everything went smoothly. Everything went smoothly. We have a vlog that will come out uh, soon-ish, because we are traveling again, um, on our experience on Norse, giving you some tips and tricks. If you don't know about Norse, they are a semi-new airline uh, that travels internationally. Uh, Right now, they fly from London Gatwick to Miami, Orlando, New York, and Las Vegas. (laughs) And there's one more, I think, direct. Was LA direct? Yes, I think it was LA as well. Um, Really cost-effective airline. It is not, you may think Spirit or Frontier, but it is not Spirit or Frontier. Only in their fee policies. Yes, only in how (laughs) they structure their fees. And if you are a savvy packer, you can actually probably book a flight for under... $400. $400. Mm, if you don't trip. round trip, if you don't need food on board, um, if you pack light, it is really a good airline to get across the sea um, and on, on cheap and not breaking the bank. Like we looked at British Airways, we looked at American Virgin. Airlines, Virgin. We were looking at like two to three thousand dollars for just economy. Yeah. And some of those didn't include seats, and it was just anyways. So Norse, we're going to do a, a special video on that, but strongly recommend them. Um, it, you know, it's not Virgin Voyages British Airways service in terms no. of super outward customer service that you're used to from those airlines, but it was decent. The flight attendants were decent. The check-in staff were decent. The flight took off and it landed semi-safely. Um, <laughs> semi-safely. <laughs> I don't know. Both of the landings, I I found a little questionable, but um, I made it to the ground, and that's we all made it that to the ground, and that's all we made. You know, I've been on plenty of planes where I question the landing, um, but yeah, it was a great flight. I had no issues. I actually slept for maybe two hours. I didn't sleep that long. Mm. Um, yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. I think um, <laughs> Sean has a story there. I think my thing was I was. There's so much excitement of being there that I just couldn't sleep. Like I was watching a movie. I'm like, I should really stop watching this and go to bed or <laughs> go to sleep. And I just, I just kept watching it. But anyways, I also didn't want to miss like the horizon part. Like when it goes from night to sun, because obviously you're crossing into another time zone. So I kept waiting for it. You're going into the future. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then these new Airbus, uh, not Airbus, Boeing 787 has these like window 
things that you do with a button. Oh yeah, it's digital. So you don't pull down a shade, you press a button to make right. the window darker. Or lighter. Or lighter. Um, and yeah, I, I just kept watching and making it brighter. And I'm like, nope, still not yet. So yeah, maybe that was. I slept more on the way back than I did on the way there. Um, but the flights were great both both ways. Yeah. I got lost in some movies. Before you knew it, it's like we're there. And I, I guess maybe on more traditional commercial flights like Southwest, you don't get that right opportunity to put on a movie or whatnot. And maybe that's why I become so fidgety. It's because there's nothing going on. I get bored with my music. Right. I get bored with what I have on my phone. Like I this on this flight, I listened to music. Mm-hmm. I watched a movie. I listened to music again. I read a book. Yes, surprising to many of you. Um, I'm a little educated here and there. Um, But yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah. Uh, So do you want to move to the next question? Sure. Um, What is your biggest surprise about London and its people? Are Londoners friendly? Um, You know, that's a great question because (laughs) I think... Londoners might have a bad reputation. A bad reputation. Or and maybe we just met some really nice ones. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody I met was fucking fucking funny and, and nice. And Everyone was friendly. Everyone was nice. Um I didn't have a bad interaction with anyone. No. As a matter of fact, again, another story we'll get to. Someone was very friendly enough to offer me a drink. <laughs> And like the first, the first day we got there, we went to a restaurant with our friend, and um, like people were just talking to us. I was like, "Oh, this is cute. oh yeah, that did happen the first day too." <laughs> also, it was like one o'clock. No, it was like twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, eleven. People were just drinking, eating, and working. And I was just like, "This is great. Yeah. I need this life. Where, where, where can I duplicate this back home?" Oh, nowhere. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I ran into a single person that I would call rude or nasty at all. I've been a nasty. At the whole trip. So to me, Londoners are very nice, friendly people. And I mean, I were I used to work for British Airways and I never really encountered anybody rude. I thought everybody was pretty nice. Just, of course the business class people are just total fucking a-holes. Yeah. But, you know, that's business class, right? <laughs> And it's usually the ones that didn't pay full price for business class that were mostly the assholes. I feel that. Yeah. But, I mean, everybody we encountered, bars, clubs, restaurants, just really nice people. Really nice. Um, you know, your experience may be different. Yeah, the mileage may vary on that one. Um, also, it may be the energy that you put off. Who knows? Yeah. I, know. I thought it was great. I thought they were super nice. I, I felt like when I walked into places, it was more warm and welcoming than sometimes when I walked to places here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So. Um, was it easy to get around? It was <sighs> super easy to get around. Um, There's like 72 different trains. There 2.5 million buses. Yeah, the buses run 24-7, <laughs> which is crazy. Super crazy because if you've ever been to Florida, public transport here sucks. Yeah. You see a city bus maybe every 45 minutes. Yeah. If you're lucky. I mean, I don't I don't know their schedule, but it feels like that. you waiting around. And also they don't run all night. No, nope, they don't. Well, I don't think everything runs. Well, I think the buses do just yeah. not the trains. Right. No, oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I thought it was, okay. In full transparency, we did have somebody guiding us. <laughs> well, yeah. But in terms of connectivity, like from where you're at. To getting to somewhere else. There's a train for it. Yeah. There's a bus for it. Yeah. You put that shit in Google Maps and you can probably see what stop you need to get off, what if you need to transfer to a bus. Um, there's some rail apps as well that are good for that. And also Manny's favorite thing he had to do was tap to pay. Tap to pay. Uh, transportation, <laughs> you're just going to tap that bitch all day. You're going to tap your phone, tap your phone, tap There's your a phone. lot of tapping in the stations. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're transferring to a different train, you pass a certain point, then you, you need to tap. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just tap and go, tap and go, tap and go. Listen, um, Hot tip, get yourself a credit card with no international fees. Yes, that's a good tip. Because 
Every time you tap, it's an international fee. So uh, keep that in mind. Or you um, may already have one that does yeah, that. Just verify that your credit card or your debit card, whatever you want to use. Uh, but it was super easy to get around. I, you need to be able to haul ass, though. Like, I we went with, like, I thought I walk fast. Because in Florida, in Florida's terms, I walk faster than normal people here in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> in London, Sean and I look like two snails or two tortoises trying to get around. Because this, I, I, I'm not excited. I feel like the, the speed people walk, they are walking with a purpose, a purpose and have determination to, to either get to where they're going or not miss the next train. And Which is another thing that I liked about London. And I think you said this in the one that we previously recorded. But like people are just minding their business. No mm-hmm. one is paying attention to you because they are paying attention to what they need to be doing and mm-hmm. where they're going. So like... Everyone kind of just minds their own business, which is great. I wish more people here would mind their business. Yeah, like here when you walk in somewhere, everybody's like looking at you. And, you know, again, mileage may vary, but I Mm -hmm. felt like there, anywhere I went, nobody was looking at you. No. People were with their people in their phone. In their business. In their own business. They just (laughs) were not paying attention to you one motherfucking bit. No. But... Definitely uh, use Google Maps, or if you're an Apple and you hate Google Maps, then use whatever the hell y'all got. Um, but I would also recommend like a rail app. Uh, the friend we were with used one. Um, there's a couple of them out there, and it, it just pinpoints trains where you need to move, where you change. You can also put what time you need to be somewhere. So yeah. But if you're staying in the city of London, like right in the middle you might be able to just walk most places. Right. I was going to say, like, it depends on where you're staying in London, um, if you are close to a station or not, because that does matter. um, Because otherwise you could be walking for a bit until you get to a station. Or then there's the option to take a bus Mm -hmm. to a closer station. Or they also have Uber and Lyft. Yeah. So, So, I mean, we were a little bit outside of London, uh, somewhere called Peckham Rye. Uh, which I absolutely love and want to move there now. Um, it was just such a vibe. Like, the amount of cultures that were there, the restaurants, the people. I was just like, this is this is beautiful. Yes, it was. Um, so I actually liked being a little bit outside of, like, the commotion. Um, and we would get anywhere within, like, 30 minutes by train. Yeah. Yeah. Um... The yummiest food you had that doesn't exist in America. That one's going to be difficult because I feel like all the food we had exists in America. <laughs> well, no. Maybe not the candies and treats that we had. That's what I was thinking. Like, we we went on a scavenger hunt at a grocery <laughs> store. It's a Tesco. <laughs> not a Texaco. Not a Texaco. A, a Tesco, Tesco. Which is a grocery store over there. It's very cute. Yeah. Um... <laughs> By the fourth day we walked in, I think the police officer knew who we were. <laughs> um, yeah, we bought all kinds of candies and cakes, and I really wish I knew the names. We threw all the boxes away. So there was the Jaffe cake, which oh, is Sean remembers. the chocolate little round with like an orange slice. Mm, okay, that was good. Um, there was my fave, the Biscoff Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. They don't sell, they don't they sell, don't sell that here in the US, no. So it was a, a white chocolate Kit Kat with Biscoff. Oh my God, so good. Biscoff cookies. Um, oh my God, I can't remember what the fluff one was called that I let your parents try. It was like a marshmallow cream um, covered in chocolate. Um, I had these delicious little bears. I forgot <gasps> what they were called. Yes, what is his name? I'm going to call him Jeffy Bear. I don't know what it's name <laughs> was. Jeffy Bear. It was so... I felt so bad eating it because it was an actual bear, but he was spongy cake stuffed with chocolate, and it was so delicious. And I'm sure there's probably a version of it here, <laughs> but I think the treats were probably the biggest highlight over there in terms of what we ate. Uh, we actually Besides, didn't have fish and chips. No, we had fish finger sandwiches. We did the have first day. Oh yeah, we did have fish. That was actually good. And I don't even like fish. <laughs> that was yeah, I forgot all about that. That was our first meal. It was. 
And yeah. we also, you, I thought you were going to talk about your cauliflower. Uh, I was going to talk about that a little later. Okay, never mind. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> I, I th- good question. We just did not do a good job. I just didn't remember the Documenting name. the food. Um, yeah. But in terms of foods, there are options of all kinds, all, all fucking styles of food. Italian, Chinese, Vietnamese. Oh my God, so much. Portuguese. Bri- I mean, it Rotisserie was Rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to break into that story or we want to leave it for the end? Um, no, we can talk about it. Okay, so where we were staying, there was this place called Rotisserie Chicken. Wait, no. It was called Roosters. <laughs> it was called Roosters Chicken. And every time I walked by, I was either drunk or high. Sorry. And, Will you apologize to <laughs> And I always called it rotisserie chicken. And that was our joke the whole trip. Every time we walked by, I'm like, ooh, I want rotisserie chicken. And there was one night uh, that I did finally get rotisserie chicken. And you'll be happy to know that it's not rotisserie chicken. It is actually fried chicken. <laughs> It was really good. We had it one it was, night when we left it's like a, the club. It's like a Chick-fil-A, non-healthy version of Chick-fil-A. He, yeah, it's kind of like a... Mm, I wouldn't give it Chick-fil-A quality. I would say it was more like a Zaxby's. Mm-hmm. I think it was better than Zaxby's. Okay. Somewhere in between a Zaxby's and a Chick-fil-A. It was ro- <laughs> Roosters. <laughs> Roosters. Oh my god, it was so good. And finally, that night, I was very drunk. And um, I just kept saying, I can't wait to eat rotisserie chicken. Uh, and Sean's like, I need you to calm down. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I was on my phone trying to find out the name of the bear snack, and I just can't find it. It's okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think we did anything wild London-y. Um, we kind of sit probably going to save that for a future state of a trip. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts now on America and entering to Europe versus the Caribbean? Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, thoughts on America. It's still America. Um, Europe was such a different vibe from america things were very much a little i know people are fast-paced trying to get to where they're going but they also are very laid back right i mean we learned dinner is later dinner is later dinner is more about socializing casual drinks someone a restaurant getting you in getting you food and getting you out and then getting the next people in like here in america it's like we need to turn this table as quick as possible because we need to put more butts in the seat to make more money. Right. Whereas over there, I was more like, do you want to start off with the drink? And here's the drink menu. And then they'd walk away. And then you'd be like, I really want this drink. <laughs> and then they'll come back. They'll get your drink order. They'll give you the drink. And then you just start engaging in your conversation. And you just do kind of drift away. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that tends to happen sometimes when we go to restaurants with like good, really good friends. Yeah. But, like, the server always comes in and they're like, you ready to order? Let's put it in order. Let's get you an appetizer. You want it? Because servers are trained to, like... Turn the table. It's their money, too. Exactly. That's another thing. No tipping over there, right? That is, that's another point for your <laughs> no tipping. Now they do tend to add fees, but... They do, but, like, I'd rather you do that than me have to be, like, right. tip, 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 tip. So I think for Americans, it may seem that they're being rude, not taking time, whatnot, but... Honestly, I think it's about the vibe of being with who you're there, enjoying it. Exactly. Um, oh, venturing to Europe versus... Listen, America's America. I know Europe has its own problems. I know... Every place has uh, their own problems. U- the United Kingdom has major problems, also politically, as we do here. And they face some of the same challenges, just not continuous murders with guns. Um <laughs> Sorry, I just had to put that in there. But when I look at it between them and here, I'm just like, the diversity of everywhere I went was just... That it, was one of the amazing smile things on my face. about it, is seeing how many different cultures 
are in like one section. Like on Peckham, the, the road behind the Airbnb that we walked a lot, you go from a African hair braiding store to an Indian store yeah. to whatever the next a nationality posh, is. A posh bar. And then next to it was another like salon. And like the dialect was just all kinds there of There were people dialect. in the alleyway grilling and selling food and it smelled amazing. It felt like, it felt like the Caribbean in that section. It did. It, it was very, very Caribbean, Caribbean vibes. Um, I don't know if this is more towards cruising or versus the Caribbean. Versus the Caribbean. I mean, if we're counting all three of them, like, I've always said the Caribbean tends to have some of the nicest people I've ever met, not just because I'm from there. Um, <laughs> I, I and, and I just, in that particular small frame of place we were, mm-hmm. we didn't encounter some of the brudeness that we encounter here in the States. And again, the fact that people were just minding their own fucking business was really cool because you know, not to bring this back up, but, you know, as two gay males, I walk into a restaurant, uh, both of different colors as well. Uh, we tend to get looked at when we walk, when we get se- seated. Like, people are always kind of looking out the corner of their eye. like, And, you know, you just kind of feel like, or are they just trying to figure out who the fuck we are and what we, what we are together? Whereas over there, I saw none of that. People were engaged in their conversation. I remember being at a bar the first night, I think it was. It was like 10 something at night. And we see like this group of older ladies coming in to have drinks. It was that rooftop bar. We had the Tommy Margaritas. Okay, never mind. He doesn't remember. That's cool. He was probably drunk there too. Um, but it just those type of things, like people were communal fellowshipping in their own sense and just not giving a fuck who else was around them, which was just, it felt completely different from America, and maybe it's just the state Sean and I live in that has caused some of these thoughts. You know, maybe it's Chicago. We could maybe say it's a little bit differently, but I still kind of felt it. Not as bad, maybe, as yeah. here. But, yeah. I don't know if that answers the question. I think we do the best we could. <laughs> um, would you return to London? Yes. Yes. Period. More to see. <laughs> <laughs> There's more to see. And we will be going back to London. Um, <laughs> Did you want to announce that here today? <laughs> no, it's fine. They don't need to sell everything. Okay. Um, we have already recapped Norse. Um, we kind of gave you that backstory. Uh, but the blog will do it justice. It, you know, it will. Because it'll show you video of like what we're talking about. Yeah. Versus just talking at you. But I will quickly share two things that happened to me on Norse. <laughs> um that had nothing to do with the airline itself. It was the passengers on the plane. Uh, so we had booked a aisle and a window, hoping that no one would sit in between us because the flight was showing that it wasn't full. Mm. Um, lo and behold, we got on the flight and this is going to London. And we were like, mm, flight's almost boarded. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody sitting over here. Flight attendant came on. Flight attendants, cabin is ready for departure, cross check. And then, out of nowhere, this man comes next to me, like, I'm sitting there. And I was like, oh. (laughs) And this is right after I literally got comfortable, had all my stuff put away. Yeah, we stretched our shit out. We did. We used all the under the seat. (laughs) I was like, fuck. Um, I was like, okay, do you mind sitting in the aisle seat? Because I was like, I'll just move over to the middle because it would just make it easier. Um, which he agreed to. Um, I seemed mean, like who wouldn't? <laughs> right. <laughs> he got the nice deal out of this. Seemed like a nice enough gentleman. Um, we made a little bit of small talk. Um, as the flight went on, he ordered food and drinks. I, I don't know if this man is just clumsy or what, but <laughs> he was spilling drink all over himself when he went to go sip it. Um, at one point, he ordered a drink, and there was a split in the cup, which, you know, not his fault. He asked the flight attendant for another cup, which he gave him. I would have asked for a full another motherfucking drink. But he still proceeded to sip and spill. So I don't know what was happening with him. <laughs> I'm sitting on the window, and I'm just like, what is this man doing? Because he's like, all I see is, like, hands 
the in between his legs hitting the seat. And I'm just like, what the hell happened over there? His tray table was full. His tray table was full. He had his drink. He had his uh, meal. Um, he, he ordered food and he got a meal. He ordered food and he got a meal. Right. There, the, Which there's a standard I'm flight meal of, you can buy. Wondering if that was my meal. Mm-hmm. But I still got my meal. Yeah. So very confused. Not sure. We did tell him that we switched yeah. seats, but that's a whole other thing. Anyway, came to, you know what? Right, let's get some shut eye. So, you know, I turned off my TV. I got cozy, put on my neck pillow, <laughs> going to sleep. Uh, next thing I know, I'm being poked. And I'm like, why am I being poked? And I looked. and <laughs> It's not me. <laughs> this man, it wasn't me. This man is... I don't know if he has night terrors or I don't know what was happening, but he could not be still. And he was just, just fidgety. And if you can't see it, Sean, it's wrong. Oh yeah. Sorry. sorry. Every- <laughs> like he's one of those things at the cell phone, cell phone store, you know, those, those things that are just up in the air. With he somebody. was so fidgety. And then at one point I was just like, okay, I'm, uh, I should go to the bathroom. So he, he was standing in the in the aisle at this point, just looking around, which kind of freaked me out in the beginning because I woke up. He was just standing up and looking around. And I was like, okay. Um, it was too far in the flight to try to take it over. I mean, you never know. <laughs> so I went to the bathroom, came back, and was like, I'm probably not going to sleep much more. And then he started ch- checking stocks on his phone. Yeah, I don't. I I, I don't. Yeah, I I didn't know five G works at forty two thousand <laughs> feet in the air. Anyway, I did get a little bit of rest. He seemed like a lovely person. Whatever. That was the first story. Second story is coming back. So we we did the same thing, but we moved our seats. So. I, we had an aisle and a... We were in the middle now. Middle. Middle aisle and middle. Because, you know, this plane's configuration, it's three, 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 and three. So we were in the middle this time. And, you know, this flight wasn't full. It was not. We so had there was seats. We had, a seat in, um, we had a seat free. So we had room spread out. Yeah. Even though I stayed in the middle of the middle. So there was this guy we saw in line who very much gives me UFC fighter. Yep. Um, he was short, um, muscular. Just yeah. had the outfit. It had the like, outfit. It looked like the outfit. Ready, look. It looked like once he landed Orlando, he was going straight to the ring to a fight. Okay, so he is sitting across from me in the aisle wow. seat. There's a family from Europe, a black family from Europe, sitting to the left of me, but a little back. There was drama happening back there because apparently one of the girls, it was her first time flying, they had gave her alcohol. At one point, they were doing a sing-along on the plane. The flight attendant told them to be quiet. There was a freak out. S- seats were switched. People were yelling. The flight attendant had to come and be like, look. I was like, where the hell are we going to divert? <laughs> we're over the ocean, girl. I'm like, we got more than two <laughs> flight attendants back here. I mean, it was nothing physical. It was just getting no, loud. It was just a bit loud. And then her freaking out. And then the man saying, well, I'm the uncle. I'm the elder. When we get to Orlando, we go into the hotel and you going back to London. And I was like, well, damn. Way to ruin the family vacation. Um, <laughs> in fairness, we had heard them in line and they were just as yeah. messy. And it's not like a spirit messy. It was just, there was a lot of family drama going on. Yes. Um, but the one girl that was with them in her... I forgot what designer dress she had on. I was like, why are you wearing that on the plane? And on Norris. Anyway. In economy. <laughs> she got off that plane and was like, I don't know what the rest of them are doing, but I know what I'm doing. I'm going to I'm the going hotel. to Orlando. Um, <laughs> so the UFC guy was doing fine at the beginning of the flight. He had his food, had his ear pods, had a drink here and there. And, you know, we're into the flight. I decide, you know what? I'm going to try to get a little shot eye. So, same thing. Neck pillow, headphones, sleep. Um, I felt something bump me. And I woke up. And it wasn't me. And, again, it was not me. I looked over and I was like, 
Oh, there's a whole ass in my face. <laughs> Whose ass is this? I look up. It is USC man who is just standing in the aisle, leaning against the seat in front of me. Which, sure, girl, you your seat is empty. Why aren't you leaning on your own seat? Because there was someone sitting in the seat that he was leaning on. Yeah, I'm very confused I don't, by the whole thing. Like it was worse for her than you. Mm. I mean, like his I, whole cheek was in, it, in her face. So anytime, because the bathrooms were right, like maybe two rows in, front, in of front of us. So anytime anybody from the back would come to go to the bathroom, he would turn and literally insert himself within my space. Yeah. Then full ass was in Sean's face. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to cause any commotion. I just, I'm really just trying to sleep right now. So I let it go. I went back to sleep. It happened again, and it happened again, and it happened again. And the moral of the story is... Punch people in the butt when they put (laughs) it in your face. Don't do that if they're a UFC fighter. (laughs) Luckily, eventually, he just sat his ass down. He got tired, and he went to sleep. And and that was the end of that. But I was very close to just, like... Do you not see that I'm here? I know you see that I'm here because when I was watching Netflix, I was watching an anime show. And he was watching anime on his screen. Like, I saw him look over at my seat. So you knew I was sitting here. Why would you do that? I don't know. I mean, people do weird things on flights is what I've come to the conclusion, especially long flights. But in fairness, like, he should have stood in his seat. There was nobody... It was his seat, and there was nobody in the middle of that row, so he wouldn't have really impeded anybody. And then that girl was sleeping, which I also yeah. thought was weird that he stood there, and then he would look at the girl in the seat. So I would have felt uncomfortable if I was the person. I'm like, are you staring at me? Like There was a lot happening on that flight back. Yeah. But you know what? That's what happens when you take a day flight. <laughs> we got through it. <laughs> we made it to Orlando, Orlando where we got a warm greeting by from the United immigration. States Customs and Immigration. And it was just like, well, girl, you're back in the US. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was something. When we landed in London, I was, you know, I've seen all these custom shows, Sean and I on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I expected pandemonium, London uh, customs. We got off the plane, we boarded the bus, we got dropped off at uh, customs. Um, at first, there's all these electronic machines. And I'm like, fuck, can we use that? We're not UK citizens. And then I look at the little map and it's like, oh, yeah, American flags are cool. We go into this little lane thing. We scan our passport. The door is open. I'm like, okay, keep walking. Then there's the bags. I pick up my bags. Anything to declare sign. I follow that sign. And all of a sudden, we're in London. Yeah, very easy. Fast forward to the United States of America. Get off the plane, walk 62 miles to get to where we needed to be, wait 45 minutes for our bags, then wait in line for another 30 minutes to speak to an agent. Who, look, here's the story, quick, fast, and in a hurry. They say, have your passports ready. I thought Manny had my passport. We get to the front of the line, and I was like, Manny, do you have my passport? He's like, no, I don't. I was like, oh, shit, where's my passport? Then I remember it's in the bag in front of me, so I reached down. Because Sean got... Screened extra in London a before lot. boarding the plane. Another story. So <laughs> we go to the immigration officer. I'm literally pulling my passport up as we are approaching. And he said to us, he snatches my passport and says, You guys can't be doing that and throws my passport. You need to have your passports ready. And I'm just like, Okay, bro. I'm like, I'm sorry. First of all, calm down. It's not that serious. He lit- you literally gave him your passport, and then I was handing him my passport. Right. It wasn't that fucking serious. I don't know. Created an electronic system, so I don't have to talk to you, dumbass. Anyway, then on top of that, he would talk like this, like this at us. And, and he had he was behind glass. He was behind glass, and I'm just like, what? I can't hear you. And he asked something, and Sean was, what did you say? Sean? I thought he said, <laughs> how I forgot long that. were you there? And yeah. I said, five days. And that's not even what he was asking. Me. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Like, I'm like, now he's going to think our stories are inconsistent. Well, I and can't. now we're going to get pulled into the back. <laughs> I can't hear you. Speak up. 
he was rude as fuck. It was a terrible welcoming back to the United States. And I get that you need to be like, mm, I don't know, we're tough, we're customs and immigration, but you can also, you know, be kind to people. I'm just, but yeah, I wasn't time. scared of you, though. Like, I wasn't scared of you. I was just <laughs> pissed off at you. I mean, you, you just, I was just pissed off at you because you were treating me like shit. And I'm a fucking United States citizen. I'm like, that's how you treat us. I can't imagine how you treat our guests that come into our country. Oh, uh, yeah. For or, sure. Are immigrants for sure but anyways oh and then he was like how do y'all know each other i'm like uh excuse me but anyways moving on uh um, that wasn't on the list but it came out <laughs> let's talk about the notting hill festival the notting hill festival um if you don't know it is a caribbean right yes um festival There is like 20 plus stages throughout the most poshest area in London. Um, I love how you use this posh now. I'm sorry, rich. (laughs) It's it's very interesting that it's one of the richest neighborhoods. And you have this ginormous Caribbean festival Mm -hmm. uh, in it. And these rich people board up... (laughs) All of their houses. Like, I'm like, is this for real? Like, anyways. A time was had at the Notting Hill Festival. The Notting Hill Festival. We didn't know what to expect, first of all. This is my first time going to it. Um, First of all, we started drinking on the train. Yeah. Let let me just prefix that. We did. So by the time we got to the Notting Hill Festival, I think I was about three drinks in. Mm -hmm. Because we bought more drinks at a station. And we also drunk those. Yeah. So by the time I got into the festival, I was three drinks in. And if you know me, that's like two past my limit of sanity. Yeah. But anyways, continue. Um, so we walked through a large crowd of people through a streetway. Um, and we were like, oh my God, is this it? Because I don't know <laughs> if I could do this all day. But we broke past them and went like through a side street and then like the whole area that this festival covers is humongous. We didn't we didn't touch we, we didn't, didn't scratch the surface it. of this festival. But it was like as we walked we would stop and listen to certain people play. We would pick up a drink. Um we stopped in front of this one stage cuz there was enough room for mm-hmm. everyone to be spread out and not touch anybody. Um we had drinks from there. Out of a little coconut shell. I had finished I my drink. drink that. No, you didn't. I had finished my drink and we were having a good time. And this lady and her man, I, they were next to us. And she came over and she saw my coconut was empty and she pulled a little flask <laughs> out her bag and then she poured some a liquid into my coconut. <laughs> and I drunk the liquid that she kept pouring in my coconut. And y'all were like, mm, why did he do yeah. that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know why I did that. My face and our friend's face were like, the fuck just happened? <laughs> and then the lady turned around and said, it's Scottish whiskey. It was Irish, right? Scottish. Oh, it was Scottish. It was Scottish whiskey. Uh, but they were from Ireland. I don't fucking know. We didn't engage in a conversation. When the, she turned around. She said hello. She looked at your coconut. She poured the drink in. And then we. she saw all of our faces of concern. And then she's like, it's Scottish whiskey. And then she took a sip. And that was the end of that. I didn't get much more out of her. Okay. And then we were, after that, we are like, we got to keep walking. We got to keep walking. We got to keep walking. We did. Um, we went to some other stages, listened to some music, got some more drinks. It was just a good time. If and you are a fan of like Caribbean music, whether it's reggaeton, reggae, all the all the things, this is a place for you. Yeah, there was Calypso, there was all types of music, um, people representing all sorts of Caribbean. Yeah, there was a strong like Trinidad, Trinidad Jamaica, Jamaica presence. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, on our way out, we ran into this DJ setup and we saw these dancers on skates. And we were just sitting there enjoying the music because they started to play like Janet. And you know I had to stay for that. <laughs> And then they just started playing, like, 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. And we were like, 
Yes. And we stayed there for a minute dancing in the streets with yeah. other people. And it was so much fun. Yeah. We also bought a questionable pink drink. We're not sure uh, what oh, we yeah, drank. I about that one. Um, <laughs> it was being poured out of water bottles. So <laughs> clearly somebody made that at home. Look, <laughs> you go in to have a good time. Someone's going to offer you something and you're going to take it. And it's going to be yeah. fine because everybody else took it. I recommend the <laughs> Notting Hill Festival. Uh, good time. Lots to see. If you know my, <laughs> if you know what I mean. If you know, you know. A wink, wink. Um. But yeah, it was. We went on family night, family day. Oh yeah, that was family day. The next day was supposed to be adult day, and I was like, I and can't I imagine like, what adult day would look like. This is family day because <laughs> I, I kept seeing that? kids. And I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you should be here. They want to protect you from the gays, but they got you here. We weed and alcohol everywhere. But anyway, it was so much fun. I, I recommend it. It's a good time if you love music. Um, I don't know how you get through all the stages, though. So. No. Um, what do we want to run through? Because um, if you've never heard of an Uber boat, time. you can ride an Uber boat in London through the river and see all the see all the sites. Sites. Um, Tower Bridge, the Shard, Big Ben. The funny story out of there because we're running out of time is we almost all fell into the water. Okay. <laughs> We were all in the back. We're like, oh, let's sit, let's sit in the back. Let's watch it. It was choppy. It was choppy. The moment that hell. boat took off, we were like, shit, go inside. Go inside or we're going to end up in this river. I was like, nope, they can stay back there. I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> um, Sean had alluded to something about cauliflower. We're moving real fast now. Keep up. Um, <laughs> I had some of the best fried cauliflower in my entire goddamn life. <laughs> and all I can do, just like rotisserie chicken... All I can say is I want to go back for some <laughs> fried cauliflower. It was delicious. I forgot what the base was. It was like an oil or something? Uh, aioli. An aioli sauce. With something. I didn't I didn't answer this with the, the, the foods because I feel like they probably saw that here in America. <laughs> I've never had it that fucking good. It was delicious. It was amazing. It's called the Forsa Forsa <laughs> wine. <laughs> For that. In Peckham. It's a rooftop bar. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful views. views. The drinks were amazing. The drinks were amazing. Listen, I had this picante um, oh, margarita cocktail. It's a frozen margarita. Yeah, it was frozen. But the actual um, cocktail was hot. Yeah. So like it was, I was drinking something frozen, but it was hot. It was it was it was trippy. It was wild, but it was very tasty. Super <laughs> trippy. I also had an avocado margarita. I forgot about that. Not oh, yeah, at this yeah, bar. Yeah. It was at another bar. Um, yeah, I guess we got creative with drinks out there. <laughs> they were delicious. Speaking of creative drinks, also rooftop bars are a treat in London. Let me just say, he loves a rooftop bar. But anyway, speaking of creative drinks, we went to this basement bar. <gasps> yes. Now. Basement state. When we first went in here and I was like, what in the speakeasy is this? I've never because been in a speakeasy. So I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool. It was very, it was very dark, low lit. There was only candlelight. Mm -hmm. It was very sexy at the same time. Yeah. There were people in corners. And again, nobody trying to see what the fuck was happening. No, everybody was minding their business. And, and this is not a sexual bar. It's not a sex club. It's, it's not a, a sex club. It it's, is a, it's a bar. It, it is a real bar. <laughs> Even though there's a sign about prostitutes on the door. But anyways. <laughs> it was just that everybody was like, there was couches. They were very chill. You were with your group or your person having a drink having conversation and it was just very very chill great service and the menu was poignant and to the point they also had a drink on there called feeling lucky or something around the that the, those lines so i chose that one because i was like hmm, why not surprise me and they brought me a drink that was made of a couple of different things do you remember um one of them was vermont Burma, Vermont, which is a drink which, if you drink it purely, it'll give you hallucinations. But there wasn't enough of that in mind to do that. For me, it was just one of the ingredients. The funny part is, I didn't know what you ordered. 
And then when the server came and sat down at our table, I was like, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) I was also drunk. (laughs) (laughs) But it was cool because she came over like a speakeasy would. Yeah. Very mysterious. She's like, I can't tell you what's in it. (laughs) But we can guess the ingredients. Yeah. And our friend and you were just naming shit. I'm like, I don't know. That tastes like, like, I'm in my own. I was like, that tasted like shit. (laughs) I'm going to stick with my... (laughs) My espresso martini over here. <laughs> but it was so cute. It was fine. It was very chill. It's in the heart of London. Yeah. It's called Basement State Bar. So if you go and you like little speakeasies, it is not speakeasy prices. It is a little pricey. It's a little pricey, but I think the cocktails were worth it. Yeah. And the, vi- <laughs> the vibes in there, 10 out of 10. Vibing. Vibing. Um. <sighs> Have you ever heard of the tube in London? Uh, some of them have AC and some of them do not. The tube is the train. Yes. Uh, let me tell you, we went on one of the lines. It's called the Jubilee Line uh, uh, in the middle of rush hour. And that's an experience I will never forget. Oh, it's very much. I'm trying to get home from work and it's all of London descending upon <laughs> stairwells and tubes oh that's another thing going to the underground ones some of those escalators are so steep also they respect the if you're not walking stay on the right yeah if you're walking stay on the, like they take that shit real serious yeah they do it. get to the right <laughs> I was, if you ain't walking down this thing get to the right and get out the way i was like holy fuck they're not playing <laughs> but anyways uh manny sweats all the time and when i got on the jubilee line or going towards the jubilee I felt it becoming very hot. And I'm like, please, God, tell me we're not going on the one without AC. I ask our friend, I'm like, are we going to the underground? And he's like, yes. And I was like, oh, fuck. Um, I survived. But uh, please be mindful of the trains that have AC and don't have AC. I mean, some of them, you can't help it. like. And it's usually just quick stops, but yeah, usually it is. I sweat so quickly that it's just not. Fun. I mean, I started sweating on that one, and I was like, "There's people on here with jackets and coats on." Yeah. I was just like, "How are you I, I would be dying because yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I mean, I sweat, but not as easily as you yeah. do. But like, I was like, "It's really starting to get hot in here. What is happening?" I mean, <laughs> jam-packed people up in that train. Yeah. So yeah, just be mindful of it. Um, but it was a great experience because every time we talk to people, they're like, oh, you survived the Jubilee line during rush hour. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, check that box out. We're true Londoners now. Uh, so don't, don't, don't try to travel at rush hour. Uh, we did go to this cute gay bar called John the Unicorn. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was really close from where we were staying, which was great. Yeah, uh, We had a ball there. We just wanted to put it out there in case you were ever looking for a gay bar in Peckham. Not in London, but in Peckham. Uh, it was fun. It's a vibe. It is more loungy. Yeah. It is not. <laughs> it's not a I'm boom, com- boom, boom, boom. Comparing boom, it boom, to boom, Florida boom, again, boom. or at least, you know, Chicago too, the bars we've yeah. been to. It's just super loud music in your face, nowhere to stand, yeah. nowhere to sit. It was more like a dive gay bar. Yeah. This was just adorable. They even served <laughs> pizza adorable. and stuff. I had a great time. The drag queen killed it. Oh, yeah, she got everybody up to dance. It was fine. Yeah. We had a great time. She was working at the cocktail bar. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was, you'd have to be there to get it. But I just want to throw out John the Unicorn. It was fun. I had a ball there. It was mad fun. It was fun. Well, that was our uh, London trip express. That's answering your question. Yes. Let's go into what's your issue. But bum ba dum bum bum And we're back. Manny, do you have an issue? I do have an issue. Ooh. You didn't think I had an issue, did you? I did. Well, <laughs> you have under, my, not under, estimated. Managed. You have underestimated me today, my friends. Oh, no, I have underestimated them. I want to talk about um, the country. Is it the country of Georgia? 
Oh, yes. Uh, that recently passed some sweeping LGBTQ plus rights. Uh, so they passed a law le- recently that is not good for the LGBTQ plus community. Okay. The legislation, which is controversial, obviously, focuses on family family values and the protection of minors that will allow officials to outlaw pride events and censor films and books. Kind of like what's happening here in Florida. Or the U.S. in general. But this was approved by the full parliament. So this is like full country. Uh, the day after, a well-known well-known uh, transgender model was murdered uh, a day after the legislation passed in her home. And if you want to know more about it, I, I suggest I'm going to post something on our Instagram. I suggest you Google it. Where my issue is beyond the innocent life that was killed. She was absolutely beautiful and a model. First, like, trans model out of their country is the sense that we continue not only here in the u.s but across the world that we continue to focus on shit that doesn't matter what i mean by that is focusing on laws that continue to impact certain parts of our world and people uh, when there is still unhoused people people that cannot uh, afford food Uh, children that don't have parents that don't beat them, Um, schools that are unsafe uh, where kids get shot at daily, or you can't go to the mall, you can't go to a restaurant, you can't go to the movies. But here we are again, you know, it's not the U.S., but another country, once again, continuing the negative rhetoric of trying to create laws that, again, impact the LGBTQ plus community, and not just the LGBTQ plus community, but any anybody that is different. We continue to focus laws that impact that. And the rhetoric that people say doesn't have an impact is what's impacting. Pure evidence of this young lady being murdered. Obviously, there's an investigation going on right now. But quite a coincidence, huh? When you create laws that give people the sense that might not have sense that say, hey, my government supports me in saying that these people don't deserve rights or don't deserve to be here. That may not be what the law says, but that's what people that don't have sense take with them and then go out and do senseless crimes against the communities. So that's my issue. I'm tired of it. I saw it this morning. I'm just like, I don't even know what to do anymore about it. Do I cry about it? Do I get upset about it? Do I get angry about it? People tell me to go vote. Sure, whatever. When are we going to get to a point that we will just accept people for being different in who they are as long as, once again, not hurting anybody? Why don't parents become better parents of their own kids and you and your house govern what they can and cannot see and not try to diminish everybody out of this world that is different. That is truly where it begins, in your house, because those are your beliefs. The fact that somebody is different, and that scares you, should not be the reason we're eliminating people out of this world. And that's my issue this week. Thank you. Um, My issue is going to be real quick. Um, Nelly Furtado put out an album today. Oh, she did? It is called Seven. Yeah. And I have listened to it. It is a quick listen. It's only 34 minutes. Oh, you love uh, a short album. I love a short album. Uh, it doesn't... I forgot how many songs are on it. It doesn't seem short. But I have to say, I'm impressed. Um, I love Loose, which is probably my favorite album from her. Um, the one with Man Eater for y'all that only know her for singles. Man eater, man. Um, and Promiscuous Girl. <laughs> promiscuous Girl. Exactly. Um, but go check it out. It's called Seven. Um, I think she did a really good job on this one. I didn't even see it. So I guess I need to go listen. 
<laughs> it didn't come up on my new releases. Uh, it it came up as a suggestion for me to pre-save it, so I pre-saved it. Oh, so you pre-saved it previously. I like that. I pre-saved an album with somebody I didn't know. Yeah. Her name is Jazz, and I I heard one single of hers, and I was like, oh, wow, she's cute. And then I saved her album, and it came up today. Surely I did not remember it. (laughs) Um, So I was thankful for that feature. Yeah, it's a cute feature. Um, Bad Bunny also came up with a song called Una Velita. Which is a tribute to Puerto Rico. Anyway, so yeah, no, that's a, that's my issue. Yeah. Anything on the LGBTQ issues? For, from what you said, yeah. no, I wholeheartedly agree with everything you said. It's wild. It is wild. It's wild. It's sad, but that is the state of affairs of the world we live in. It is. It's not just America. It is all over the place. Because even when Europe had their um, elections not too long ago, people were worried that their conservative party was going to Italy take over. So conservatism is growing, and I do feel like the U.S. was a catalyst for it because people look to us, whether good or bad, and it sets precedent. And we are just continuing to not only um, make laws that hurt the lower class people or um, people who already don't have rights. Um, But we're also hurting mothers, um, single people by continuing to push that abortion should be outlawed. And like, it's just, if everybody just minded their business, like, none of this would be happening. If you go, if you walk down the street past a trans person, and you probably wouldn't even notice that they were a trans person, and just kept walking and managed your business, and they that person kept walking and managed their business, this world would be a better place. But no, everyone is afraid that the gays are trying to touch your kids and take your kids or make your kids gay. Like, I don't understand any of that because there's no proof of evidence to it. Just like no one is eating pets in Springfield, um, <laughs> which is wild to me when J.D. Vance can get on TV and say that was a lie and he admitted that it was a lie. But y'all is still, you would still vote for this man is beyond my comprehension. My brain cannot I cannot compute with any of it. I mean, it. I have come to the realization that I will go to my grave whenever that time comes, not understanding the infatuation that people have for people that are not like them. I I, I won't understand it either, but like, the, the, as the saying goes, what people don't understand, they fear. Mm-hmm. And so if there was more compassion and more willingness to understand then there would be less fear but instead no you go straight to fear mongering and then you don't want to come down here to learn anything or understand anything so you just stay in that mindset and and you don't have to you don't have to agree with that or fully understand it i think if you have I, I think you should engage in dialogue to try to understand it. No, I agree. But then you can leave that conversation and be like, okay, I understand at least where you're coming from. I personally don't get it. Right. So I'll let you be, and I don't need to create, obviously, a law that's going to endanger you because of the fear that I didn't know. But you have to be strong in mind for you even to get to that mindset because otherwise you will listen to politicians or people in power that tell you that these people are this and that. And you will believe that because you're weak-minded and you don't do your own research and you don't discover things for yourself. So if you continue to believe the lie that someone perpetrates to you, then you will never have the ability yourself to go and understand why this is this way or why this person is this way <sighs> well we hope you enjoyed episode 87 uh we are going to spain we will have a new episode when we return um i believe the date is on our instagram <laughs> i don't remember it um but thank you again for joining us we hope you enjoyed our quick furious Recap, I don't know that we'll have a vlog on London. The Norris thing for sure will come out. I don't think we recorded enough in London to create a vlog. Maybe we'll do some shorts. I'm not sure. 
Uh, but thanks to you again. Thanks to you again. What the hell? Um, where can people find us? Um, you can find us on all social media platforms. Use at MASXP23. Yes. And please, if you haven't done so, go out there and write us a review. It's the only way our show can get out there to more people. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization. <laughs> we very much are. Uh, anything we do, we pay for ourselves. We're not getting paid, endorsed by anybody. So the quickest and easiest free way to help us grow without having to do anything paid uh, <laughs> is to at least get a review out there for us. Share us with your friends. Share us with your family. Share us at Thanksgiving with people that uh, have different views from us. And it'll either piss them off or help them understand something new. <laughs> One way or the other, girl. One way or the other. All right, it's been great being back. Uh, we've recorded twice now in a row. That's, we haven't done that in a while. Anyways, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed. If you're watching uh, my lenses here with the the ring light, uh, if if you don't remember, our video podcast is also on YouTube again. Uh, so Spotify and YouTube. Yep. That'll do it for us. We are on our way to Barcelona. Yay. And we're going to France. And we're not taking Norse. We're not taking Norse. We're taking a new airline, and maybe that'll be another vlog for you. Or <laughs> maybe there'll be a new ass sitting in Sean's face on this. No, there will not. Time. There won't be. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. No more. <laughs> I'm not dealing with these people. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. And as we like to say here on the Manny and Sean Experience podcast. Do something good for yourself. And then do something good for somebody else. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Catch you on the next one.